Hello, advanced English learners. Welcome back to another episode. I am joined, of course, by the one and only Greg. Thank you, Greg, for joining me. Of course. And welcome to all of you. We are gearing up for another great conversation. But before we dive in, I want to remind you that the reason we do these is not just because we like talking to each other, but because this is a great way for you to practice your listening comprehension skills, to work on your communication skills, to reach social fluency, to get acquainted with how native English speakers speak and see how a conversation unfolds naturally. This is not scripted. It's not rehearsed. What we are sharing is happening in real time and it's just the magic of conversation. So with all that in mind, I hope you definitely take that into perspective with your language learning journey. All right, so let's dive into our conversation today. What are we talking about, Greg? Today, we are talking about fusion energy, right? So nuclear fusion energy. And there's been a big breakthrough and I'm really excited to talk about it. Yeah, so let's get into it. Okay, so this is pretty incredible what has just happened. This is something that has been decades in the making. Lots of resources and research has been poured into making this a reality. I think it's been something like 80 years. Oh, yeah. Fusion as a power source has been the holy grail of energy generation for at least a century. Wow. And the reason is we've known for a long time that the sun produces its energy using a fusion reaction, right? So the sun is basically um, a never ending explosion, right? It's just a chain reaction that's continuing to happen. And it produces a huge, huge amount of energy, so much that we can't put it into numbers. But you can just imagine that to fly to the sun would take years. And even at that great distance, we still feel the warmth of the sun on the planet, right? It actually warms our planet. It's on a summer, hot summer day, that's the heat of the sun warming the planet. It's incredible, just the power of the sun's light. Think about a heater like that you have in your house, right? Mm -hmm. A little space heater. Yeah. How far do you have to get away from that heater to not feel the warmth? I mean, several feet. Yeah, you step back maybe 10, 15 feet, and you can't feel the warmth of it anymore. The sun, you can feel the warmth from millions and millions of miles away. That just shows you how much energy it's producing. And it's producing it using fusion. Okay, so that's a really great background for it, I think, Greg. The way people are describing it is that it's going to be like a star in a box. Yeah, I think that's such a good description, a star in a box, yeah. right? So the sun is obviously massive. We don't want to create the sun exactly on Earth because it would burn up Earth, It'd right? It would be overpowering. <laughs> it would be too much. Exactly. <laughs> we want to replicate the sun in a much smaller fashion, right? So that we can have this much smaller but controlled heat source yeah. that's constantly generating power. And then what we would do is take that heat source, and like we do with many other types of power generation, that heat source boils water, which produces steam, which turns a turbine, which has magnets and coils, Mm -hmm. and that magnet spinning within these coils is what generates power, right? So most of our power plants, whether it's coal, nuclear, or fusion in the future, is just getting something to spin a coil that generates power. We need some energy to spin something. And up until now, there was so much energy that was expended in order to create something. Yeah, there's two ways to make energy. You can put a lot of energy in and get less energy out. Or in the case of fusion, you can have a chain reaction where the inputs of energy is actually less than the output. Yeah. And that's incredible, right? Because what it means is it takes less input to create more output. Yeah. It's essentially what it's saying is it's limitless. It's limitless carbon-free energy. And that's the other part of it. Way, for example, that we make a lot of power in the US is using natural gas. And natural gas, you can think of it as derived from oil that comes out of the ground. And you can think of natural gas as stored energy. So there's a lot of energy that was built up over millions of years Mm -hmm. in, in this gas. And when we burn it, we're expending that energy. Yeah. 
And that, of course, produces fossil fuel. Yeah. What are they called? Byproducts. Toxic byproducts. Which is really harmful for the planet. Yes. And if we keep this up, we can't live here anymore. Yes. It's definitely, we've proven with scientific certainty that it is contributing to global warming and climate change. Yeah. So we definitely want to, to the extent that we can, move away from what we're calling fossil fuels. Fuels that have come from the ground, that we burn, yeah. and that produce byproducts that are bad for the environment. Not to mention the actual physical, the physicality of drilling into the earth. That's problematic too. Another really good point, yeah. right? It's not just that burning these things produces pollution, which not only hurts the environment, it also hurts our lungs. There's, uh, if you've spent some time in a polluted city, you know what bad yeah. air quality is. But the second part of it is like you're saying, the extraction of the energy can be really destructive too. Obviously, a big one is fracking, where they literally explode the earth using water pressure to get to pockets of oil and gas. And that creates all kinds of chemical runoff. It can actually destabilize the mantle of the earth the crust to the point where it can cause earthquakes. Yeah. There's all kinds of negative externalities. Negative externalities meaning bad things that come as a byproduct of extracting and burning fossil fuels. So whatever your politics are on global warming, it's a fact that it's expensive and it does cause pollution. Yeah. So to the extent that we can find something that doesn't rely on that, that's a huge plus. It's a huge plus for our health. Countries themselves also really want this because it's a big strategic advantage, right? If they don't have to rely on other countries, think about Ukraine and Russia right now. That war has caused Russia to turn off its taps, which has put Europe into a huge crisis, right? Yeah. They don't have oil right now. Wouldn't Europe be much happier if they had their own limitless supply of energy. And to be self-sufficient, so you don't have to be in anyone's good graces on purpose. You would just do it out of the goodness of your heart or out of the goodness of the nation's heart. Exactly. Diplomacy, but it's not like someone's groveling to another country just for that reason, so. Yeah, it's energy independence. And then the final thing I'll say on the benefits is energy is the fuel of innovation. Right, and we love innovation here at Explearning. And what I can say is that innovation requires power, Yeah. right? You need electricity to power your computer, to power your internet, to power collaborative tools that we use, to power machinery to build things, to power robots, to power anything. It all comes back to the price of fuel. Yes. And the cheaper that fuel gets, the cheaper the energy gets, the cheaper it is for people to create, the cheaper it is for people to invent things yeah. and provide things. So the cheaper we can get energy, the more abundant everything you can think of becomes, which is really good for people that don't have as much money, really good for countries that don't have as much money. Yeah, and it's again, better for diplomacy. So we can all be on better terms with each other, nations, countries, they don't have to be fighting for resources or buddying up to a country for their resources or ganging up with a country for their resources. So it's really going to help with better peace and prosperity. Yeah, hopefully hopefully we get more peace from it. Yeah. There's going to be a transition period where there's going to be countries that have this type of power yeah. and countries that don't. Yeah. And that transition period yeah. could be shaky. But the long-term end game here is that power becomes fully abundant. And so everything downstream of that including food as well, right? Yeah. Food takes a lot of energy yeah. input. Everything downstream becomes cheaper, and that's good. And the economics of it too, it's, it's gonna be lighter on your pockets. So food will be hopefully less expensive, and also like the healthy organic food that you wanna get, less expensive. Energy, less expensive, so. Housing, housing right? Housing, yeah. Think about it, wow. housing requires a lot of energy inputs to, to produce all the materials to build the house. That's usually someone's like biggest expense. If you look at people's monthly budgets, that's usually where a lot of money goes, right? Mortgages, rent, maintenance payments. So even if you own or rent a house, that's a huge part of your monthly budget for a lot of oh, people. Yeah. Food and housing. So. Yeah. Everything you could think of gets cheaper. Yeah. Okay, so we've talked a lot about the benefits of this technology. Okay, so what are some of the cons? Before I was gonna talk about the cons, I should have said we also did talk about it, some of them, which are just that it could cause an energy imbalance between yeah. countries. Yeah, yeah, so that would be a tenuous and hopefully temporary situation. Yeah. Yeah. What I wanted to do is just talk a little bit about the actual technological breakthrough itself. Okay, yeah, let's do that. 
Okay, so we said this is a sun in a box. Yes, yeah, star right? in a box. A star in a box. Yeah. What does that really mean? What they've done is they've taken a very small amount of hydrogen, and it's a special type of hydrogen called something like deuterium, which is a funny little name. Yeah. And they've taken a pea-sized amount of this, and they've bombarded it with a bunch of lasers. And it's two protons, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it's a subset yeah. of the hydrogen atom. Yeah. It's just the protons, which yeah. is a tiny subparticle of an atom. Yeah. You have your protons and your electrons and the nucleus. Yeah. The protons are absolutely infinitesimally small. So they bunched a bunch of these together into a pea-sized thing. The size of a peppercorn, the I size think. Size of a peppercorn. Yeah, even smaller than a pea. Can you imagine? That's not the small part. The small part is the lasers they use. Oh my god! The lasers have the precision of, you can't possibly describe how precise these lasers are because wow. they have to fire it in very precise ways. Um, but what they've done is they fire these lasers at this ball of hydrogen and it's in, ignited it with a chain reaction that burns as hot as the center of the sun. Oh, which is the hottest part, right? Technically, no. Really? What's uh, the hottest part of the th sun? There's, I think there's parts of the sun that are even hotter a little further out. Okay. But it's, it, suffice to say, it's insanely hot. It's, <laughs> it's essentially really hot. what's called plasma. Wow. You can also get this at the center of a nuclear explosion. Okay. It's this super, super heated core. And in the past, the only way we've been able to achieve this is with nuclear explosions. Yeah, the atomic bomb or atomic something. Atomic bombs are yeah. the fusion bombs or the hydrogen bombs, right? Mm -hmm. Same hydrogen. Yeah. Harnessing this for good. Exactly. This yeah. is a controlled explosion. And the idea is you can trigger it so that the power mm -hmm. that it produces is more than the inputs. We talked about that. So you're on the way out, there's less energy that you need to create more energy on the way out, which in the past, it's always been less energy out. Yeah, I mean, it's almost been, it's a paradox of physics, right? Yeah. Matter can neither, neither be created or destroyed. And so theoretically, you could never have more out than you put in. But somehow they've achieved that here. And this is where we would need someone who's a little more experienced in the physics to explain it. Um, maybe that there's stored power in these hydrogen atoms. But the other part of it is that these hydrogen atoms that, that are used as fuel are super abundant. Yeah. They're everywhere. They're right. in ocean water. Think about the ocean covers like 70% of the earth. Yeah. There's limitless, effectively limitless amounts of this. It's incredible. Um, and it's clean, right? There's no radioactive waste the way you would have with nuclear power. So typical standard nuclear power is what's called fission, right? So fission is when you split up the atoms. F-I-S-I-O-N. F-I-S-I-O-N, I believe. F-I-S-S-I-O-N. Like a fissure. Like a fissure, right? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Like exactly. A split. a split. A split. So that's when you're splitting atoms, and that can create a lot of power. Fusion, and hopefully I didn't misstate this earlier. Um, we'll see. But fusion is when you're fusing things, when you're combining them. They come together and exactly. they join. Exactly. And so this is a fusion reaction where you're joining these different hydrogen atoms. And that also produces energy. Amazing. And so this is just such a cool thing. It is only the first step. We have a long way to go in terms of actually turning this into a commercial reactor that we can plug into and get power from. It could be maybe another 10 years. This is also not the only type of fusion technology that we're developing. But this is the first of its kind, and it's an enormous breakthrough that prior to now, we didn't even know is possible. We now know it's possible, and because of that, this could literally change our lives and the world and the economy, everything. Wow. Everything we know about the present day will change if we're able to commercialize this technology. So it's, oh my it's a really big deal. Really big deal. Wow. Wow, it's just wrapping your mind around something like that. It's just so different from what our status quo is right now. So it's hard to even imagine what that could be. But it's good things. Exciting. Very exciting. Really exciting. Okay, I think that's a good wrap on this. There's so much more we can talk about, obviously. We could sit here for five hours and just talk straight through one of these topics like totally. this. We want to keep it short and sweet. We respect your time and we respect our time. If you want to follow up to this, we are more than happy to do that. Let us know what are your thoughts here. What do you think are the implications of this kind of clean, limitless energy? What can you see happening with it? Use your imagination and creativity. I challenge you to do that. And we welcome your feedback and your comments. So like I said, if you want to have the listening comprehension worksheet, you will only be able to get it if you are a member of our Exploring Academy private community. So more on that later. 
That's it from us today. We will see you in the next one. Bye for now. Is one video less than a week not going to cut it for you? Would you like daily touch points and a community of passionate professionals like yourself? Then perhaps you'd be interested in joining our community and me in a space where I spend most of my time. If you're ready to level up, join the Explearning Academy, our membership program and community. You'll get access to our global private community, language and communication lessons, live Q and A's and conversations, weekly discussions, weekly quests and challenges, and our entire library of web courses, which we're constantly expanding and updating. We'll even have workshops and private feedback sessions for members only. We'll be delivering exclusive content that you'll only have access to as a member. And I'll invite guest speakers from across industries to chat about their secret sauce strategies and give you an opportunity to ask them questions. You'll be able to check in with me day to day as I share daily touch points with you on our membership site. I am so excited for you to upgrade your skills and level up your learning as you join me and the community for this part of the journey. If you're interested in joining Exploring Academy, then be sure to check out the link in the description. I look forward to seeing you in my community.